If you're having trouble in Madden or just haven't played the game in a while, these are 10 beginner tips you need to know. And if you want to stay up to date with all of the latest and best Madden tips all year long, make sure to subscribe and turn the bell icon on so you don't miss any of these important videos. Number one, passing 101. Let's start with the different types of way to pass the ball. You can do a lob pass by tapping the receiver's icon. This is what you do when you're trying to take a deep shot down the field if you have a defender beat. The next important type of pass is a bullet pass. You do this by holding the receiver's icon down the entire time. This is what you're going to do most of the time, especially when you've got defenders on the field because you want to whip the ball into them pretty quick and not hang it up in the air for defenders to have a chance at it. You only want to lob the ball downfield if a guy is wide open deep. Now let's talk about the three types of catches. The first is an aggressive catch. You get this by holding the Y or triangle button, and this will make your wide receiver jump up in the air and attack the ball at its highest point. You can use this in a one-on-one -on -one battle versus a DB, but be careful, there is the risk of throwing interception. The next catch is called a rack catch. You get this by holding the X or square button, and this allows your receiver to catch the ball in stride and keep running to get those extra yards. It's good for over the top or even over the middle. As long as you have your defender beat and you wanna get some extra yards after the catch, use this. Last Lastly and most important is the possession catch. You get this by holding the A button on Xbox or the X button on PlayStation. This means your receiver will try to secure the ball, get down and avoid hits, but also near the sideline. This is important for making sure he taps his toes and doesn't go out of bounds. Moving on to the next phase of passing 101, you don't want to predetermine your reads like this. You don't want to just lock on a receiver and predetermine where you're going to throw the ball because that's how you turn the ball over and make bad passes. You want to try your best to survey the field and find the open man. This obviously obviously takes a lot of practice and a lot of reps in game because we usually like to predetermine who we're going to go to but if you look at your guy and he's not there look around and see who else might be open it's much better to take a sack than to throw to a covered receiver because that usually ends up being intercepted and lastly we have to talk about pocket presence one of the most important things about passing this is what you don't want to do. You don't want to drift back. You don't want to drift to the side too much because that's going to make it easier for you to get sacked. It's also putting more distance between you and your receivers to make the pass difficult. You want to climb the pocket like this. And if the opportunity presents itself, you're able to take off and run just like that. That's a good thing about climbing the pocket. Again, you see, we have a lane to run. We're going to take off. If we're constantly moving backwards, we can't take advantage of that. But you always want to be climbing the pocket because your feet will normally always be set, which means your passes will be more accurate and you have less distance between you and the receiver so that means the ball can get to them quicker and you can hit them before the defense has a chance to make a play on it. Before we continue on with the rest of the video, I do want to let you know that I have a Patreon membership page where I post more high level Madden tips and strategies. So if you want to take your game to an even higher level, that link will be below in the pinned comment if you want to check it out. Number two, running 101. So first we're going to talk about the moves. You can juke by flicking the right joystick to the left or to the right to juke to either side. If you want to do a spin, you would hit the B or circle button to spin to either side. This move isn't quite as good this year, but it can still be useful sometimes. If you want a hurdle, it is the Y or triangle button. This is another one that's a little high risk. I wouldn't recommend doing it too much, but it's there if you want it. You also have a hard plant mechanic if you're on the new gen consoles, which you can do by holding the left trigger or the L2 button, which gives your guy a hard plant so that he could stop and move into another direction. Now, when running the ball, the most important thing is trying to have good vision, following your blockers and being patient. You don't want to predetermine which hole or which lane you're going to choose. You want to try to see what opens up when you see the hole, then you attack it but you never want to hold down the sprint button too soon now the sprint button is the right trigger or the r2 button you want to hit it right here once you're in the open field and you've got a lot of green grass in front of you and you're trying to maximize your runs again about right here is when you want to hit it you don't want to hold it in the backfield because if you do that it's going to cause the defense to block shed quicker and you're usually going to have a hard time running the ball see right here i wouldn't use turbo I, there was no opportunity for it i just got my few safe yards and i kept it moving because sometimes you're not going to get the home run sometimes you're only going to get three or four yards and that's okay now the best types of runs are usually going to be dives up the middle or stretches to the outside those are going to be the ones you want to use the most in shotgun you're going to want to look for inside zones those are going to be pretty useful these are typically the best shotgun runs and the same rules apply patience try to see where the hole is don't hit the turbo or the sprint button too early get into the open field be patient follow your blockers and you'll have success running the ball number three how to beat man defense so let's talk about a few routes you can look for right here in the play slot outs the running back route this angle route you can find this in every playbook in a variety of different plays this is usually going to be a very good man beating route especially with a good running back you also want to look for crossing routes you can find these in any playbook in any 
any formation. You can see here we have the slot receiver on a cross. Usually they're going to beat the man defense by enough yards to deliver a good pass. This is going to be one of your better routes in the game along with the drag route here from the tight end. Drag routes in general are good. From the tight end position, they're even better. And of course, slant routes. You can find these all over the playbook. These are going to be very good at beating man. Number four, how to beat zone defense. The best way to beat zone is by flooding it. So here in the gun bunch, we're going to actually use a play that is called flood. Now this concept, you can create it in any playbook out of most plays. But when you have three receivers on one side, it's very easy to flood a zone because you have a streak which will run off the deep zones. And then you want to play the high low game between the out route and the flat route to the tight end. So right here, we can see that the tight end is open. So we're going to deliver him the ball because the zone played further back. Now, right here, the zone is going to play down and cover the tight end. But look, the route behind him is wide open. That's how you flood a zone. So right here, we're in a trip set. We have the deep out route. We can create the other routes. We can put X on a streak with the hot routes, which we get by holding wire triangle, selecting his icon, and then we can put him on a route. Same thing with the B receiver. We can hot route him to a flat. And now we've created that exact same concept. So again, we just want to see who's open. Okay, the deeper routes open. We're going to take him. Here's another good concept, the curl flat. When you have a curl route on the outside and a route running to the flat underneath him, usually against zone, one of these two routes will be open. You just have to read the defense and see which one it's going to be. So we're going to watch the defense. We can see, okay, the flat's open. We're going to dump it down and we're going to get our easy yards in the flat. Now, right here, the defense is going to play down to the flat. So we're going to hit the curl behind it. You can find this in any playbook. Number five, defense 101. The first thing you want to make sure you're doing on defense is matching personnel. So you'll notice in your playbook, you probably have a 4-3 formation or a 3-4. Some playbooks have both. Some have one or the other. This is what you want to come out in if you see your opponents coming out in something with two wide receivers or one wide receivers. Never pick your play until your opponent picks his because it'll pop up a box on the screen that will let you know their personnel. If you see two or less wide receivers, you want to come out in a 4-3 or a 3-4 because if they're coming out in two receivers or less, they're likely running the ball and you want some bigger bodies in the box to help against this. Then you have nickel and dime sets. So with nickel, you're going to have three cornerbacks on the field. With dime, you're going to have four cornerbacks. So if they're coming out in a four wide receiver set, you probably want to use dime, but you could still get away with nickel. If they're coming out in a three receiver receiver set you usually going to want to use nickel nickel is usually one of the better sets in the game there's different versions of nickel they're always usually popular this just ensures that you're matching speed on the field and you don't have linebackers matched up with receivers that'll help you play better defense and put you in position to get interceptions just like this now let's talk about some basic coverages you want to use the first is cover two man or sometimes it's called two man under this is probably the safest coverage you can use you have everybody manned up and accounted for and you have two deep safeties over the top to prevent the big touchdown plays. Then you've got cover one. Sometimes it's called cover one, cover one press, one robber press, but you'll notice everybody's manned up. You have one deep blue zone over the middle and you have a yellow zone over the shallow middle, which can be sneaky and help you get interceptions. Then you've got Tampa two or cover two. This is going to be another pretty safe coverage. The idea here is play zone to mix it up, make them have to find the holes in the defense and kind of keep everything in front of you. Make them have to dink and dunk you down the field a little bit. And lastly, you've got cover three. There's a bunch of different versions of cover three. They're all pretty good. Kind of the same principle here. You want them to find the holes in the zone. This is going to protect against a lot of deep passes and keep a lot of stuff in front of you. Again, make them kind of dink and dunk you, which opens them up to possibly make more mistakes. Number six, blitzing. So when you want to mix in a blitz as a beginner, what you want to do is find plays that are a man blitz that have six guys blitzing. So you can see we have six red arrows here on this middle play. That means we have six guys rushing the passer. Here's another Another example in a dime formation you can see we have six red arrows coming down that means we have six rushers on the play and here's another example in a nickel formation with overstorm brave six red arrows that means six players rushing the passer now why it's good to blitz like this as a beginner to mix in is because a lot of people don't block their running back they send everybody out so if you've got six guys rushing and they only have their five offensive linemen blocking you have a numbers advantage which means one guy is going to come free and if you've been playing different coverages all game and you randomly mix this in you will probably catch your opponent off guard and you will sack the quarterback so again when you want to mix in a blitz just find a man blitz that has six guys rushing and you can make big plays just like this number seven learn the abilities so here we're at the main menu what you want to do is you want to scroll over to the nfl shield icon you want to select that and you want to click view superstar x factors 
Here, you want to scroll through every team and get familiar with all of the players and their superstar abilities. It'll tell you what these abilities do. And this is going to be very important because abilities really dominate the game. So for example, Joe Mixon has arm bar and bulldozer, and it'll tell you that gives him better stiff arming and better trucking. So if you're someone that likes running the ball, if that's your style, you might want to find a team that has a running back with abilities like this. So you know, hey, I can get Joe Mixon. I can stiff arm more. I can truck and I'll probably be more successful running the ball. And if you're more of a passer, you definitely want to look at the quarterbacks that have abilities because those are the most important positions for passing. So for example, Aaron Rodgers has a bunch of good abilities that will make passing the ball easier for you. You want to get familiar with all these players, test them out to see which players benefit you the most. Number eight, accident prevention. What do I mean by this? Here's a great example. If you're running with your quarterback, you want to make sure to always get down and slide by tapping the X or square button. The QB fumbles more than any position in the game and you don't want to give up a needless fumble to your opponent. And you can do this with even regular players. If you want to just give yourself up and go down, tap the X or square button. This is useful if it's the end of the game where you have a lead and you're not trying to take big hits and potentially give your opponent the ball back. Another part of accident prevention is not allowing your QB to just get easily blitzed every play. You can block your running back by pressing wire triangle, selecting his icon, and then pressing the RT or right trigger button to help you get some extra time in the pocket. And if you're facing a mobile QB who just wants to roll out all the time, what you want to do on defense is tap the RB button twice or the R1 button twice. This will put your defensive ends into a containment and this will really help keep the QB from being able to roll out. Number nine, clock management. Now this comes with a lot of practice, but just as a basic principle, you want to take as much time with you in certain situations. If it's the end of the half and you've got a couple minutes left, you don't want to purposely try to score too quick. You want to drain the clock and not give your opponent a lot of time to get another possession in before halftime. And if you're in the second half at any point and you have the lead and and you also have the ball, you don't want to hike the ball too early. You want to drain the clock all the way down to under five seconds because if you wind up adding more points onto your lead and your opponent has very little time left to answer that, you're going to win a lot more games. Number 10, learn how to scheme. A lot of people just find one play they like and they want to spam it over and over. And while some good players can get away with this more than others, it's better to build a scheme around your favorite play. So whatever favorite play you find, let's say it's a run to the right that you're really good with, look around that formation and see what else is available. If you can get a nice run up the middle, a run that goes to the other side of the field, and then maybe a play action play that plays off of that run so that you can mix it up and your opponent will never know exactly what you're going to throw at them. Now that we've covered all of this, you need to know about the best playbooks in the game to help you get more wins. And I did a video on that right here on the screen.